Let's begin. Hey there, scary story fanatics. Welcome back to Cleaving Thought from Bone with your host, Sociopathic. It's that time of year again, and some say it smells like love is in the air, and some say it smells like corpses, and some yet say that they're one and the same. If you've got a morbid taste for amore, then settle in by those monitor screens for a tale of love taken that I like to call Romeo and Oubliette. The smell of musty earth and foul water hung so thick in the air, the odor was nearly palpable. Julie rubbed her tongue around in her mouth, trying to desperately cleanse her palate of the pungent taste that resided there, but it was to no avail. Straining her eyes, she had no memory of how she had gotten there, stuffed into a dark and musty root cellar-like room. She was free hands and legs unbound, and perfectly able to look and wander about, giving her a chance to explore her surroundings. The floor on which she stood was soft, and gave away a little at the pressure of her weight with every step, revealing the ground to be that of soft, moist earth and mud, lending explanation to the smell hanging prominent yet diminishing in the air, due to the effects of olfactory satiety. The cramped space was dimly illuminated by a seam of light above her head, highlighting the shape of the sturdy trap door that resided there. A small ladder, fashioned to a wooden wall beneath, led to the closed aperture, but upon beating her fists against it as hard as her muscles would allow for it, it would not yield, indicating a formidable locking mechanism holding it in place. Julie called out for help, screaming until her throat had begun to burn, but there was no answer, no help to be found on the other side. Instead, she heard a male voice call out to her from her left, and she turned to see a wooden wall at first, but soon identified a door set within, made of the same material as the wall. The faint, muffled sounds seemed to be coming from the other side. Julie stood a bit hesitant, delayed herself in responding, only getting closer to the closed door so as to better hear the voice on the other side. Hello? Is anyone there? Julie heard a man call out from the other side. Yes, yes, I'm here. What happened? Who put us here? She finally responded back. I don't know, but he comes for me every day and does things, unpleasant things I don't really want to talk about, and I don't know what he wants, the voice explained. Julie had to ask. She had to know. What things? Please, I have to know what he's going to do to me, she implored the disembodied voice. He... The voice hesitated. He hurts me. He burns me. He cuts me. Anything to inflict pain, but he never says a word or responds to any of my questions, he explained. Julie was startled out of the conversation with her fellow captor by the sound of a moderately loud hissing. Frantically, she looked around for the source of the noise, but located none at first. Oh God, he's back! The man on the other side of the door called out just as Julie looked over her head and at the trap door. Seeping in from the seams, encompassing its perimeter, a fading light filtering in with translucent beams, was a misty vapor that was acrid and unpleasant to inhale. Unfortunately, by the time Julie had realized what the sound was and where it was coming from, 
the small room that she had resided within had become cloudy with mist. Her shirt to her face, trying to block out whatever gas was being pumped into the subterranean space, but it was too late. As she lifted her shirt, her knees had already begun to buckle, and her descent to the floor was imminent. She had blacked out before she had even collided with the damp, muddy ground upon which she now laid. Julie opened her eyes and took notice of the sounds, muffled by obstruction, coming from her left. The mental discorporation of the newly foreign environment and horrendous noises that now comprised her current holistic situation facilitated a lingering sense of disequilibrium that left her in a momentary state of confusion. She placed her hands in the sticky muck of the floor and looked up at the seam of incandescent light that connected into the shape of a rectangle, the trap door. At that thought... Julie was reconnected with the dire circumstances that she was now faced with, and the continued pleads and screams for help, the begs for release, informed Julie of all that she needed to know. She was still very much trapped and held captive, and whoever had done this to her was torturing the other captured soul on the other side of that closed door. They must have knocked me out so they could enter without leaving me with an apparent means for escape. Julie thought to herself. Eventually, the screaming stopped. Hey, let us go! Stop it! Please! Julie shouted as she pounded on the closed wooden door, pleading for release and for the cessation of torture and brutality forced upon whoever else was trapped on the other side. All screaming and sounds of whirring machinery stopped. Only the strange noise of metal clanking and non-violent, infrequent banging could be heard, as if someone was putting a multitude of things away. Julie sank down to a seated position and fell into an unstoppable sobbing that accompanied her begging to be let go. She had been sobbing for so long, without respite, that she had failed to notice the utter silence that now answered her in response. Hours ticked by like days, but without conscious effort, her exhaustion plunged her deep into the fathoms of slumber. Come on, get up! We have to go! Julie was awakened by a voice that seemed as frantic as whatever or whoever was shaking her awake. In an instant, her eyelids burst open, hoping to be greeted with a change of environment, to know that all that had transpired was nothing more than a bad dream, a fabrication of mental constructs and a restless mind. And although to her dismay, her surroundings had not changed, her situation had certainly improved, even if said improvement was only marginal. Someone was now there with her, and whoever he was, he seemed as assured of the possibility of escape as his clothes seemed dingy and tattered. Get up! We have to go! Now! The man told her. She believed him when he told her that there was no time for explanation. As he helped her to her feet, she realized that the dark, cramped underspace was much more illuminated than it had been earlier. Julie was now being pulled into the direction of the ladder and the trap door above it, when she understood where the excess light was coming from. The hatch above the ladder was now open, bathing the root cellar-like room with enough light that details finally began to make themselves known. The small puddles on the ground, the mix of dark brown and black muck that formed the substrate of the floor, the closed door at the end of the room, the one that had been locked from the other side once containing and concealing the panicked screams of some unknown victim, was now wide open. Julie had a whirlwind of questions for the one now leading their escape, and as they climbed to their freedom, the black-haired middle-aged gentleman reflected on the circumstances that had led them both to their current and mutual goals. The thing was, he couldn't be happier about how things were going. 
She knew him, or at least of him. He'd pop into her place of work just to get a glance at her. If he tried to make small talk, she would slough him off and go back to her duties, as if she couldn't even take a moment for friendly conversation. This, of course, was contradicted every time she would take a moment for someone else, and her supervisor never seemed to mind. He knew that he could never have her. To Julie, he barely existed until now. Now, he was her savior, climbing out of that hole in the ground in the middle of some unknown forest. They soon came upon a road to which he flagged down a stray passing by four-door blue sedan. Julie sat tight in his arms all the way to the hospital. Hours passed, rest had been assisted by medication, and police reports had been taken. Julie sat up in her hospital bed and looked over at the man that she was now enamored with. She thought of all he must have endured to rescue her, and that she would forever be grateful. As he looked back at her, he could only smile at how perfect everything went. The police would never find that hole in the woods, and even if they did, the remains of that boy he murdered could never yield evidence that would lead back to him. He made sure of that. Hell, even their testimonies to police were perfectly lined up. Sure, it took a lot of effort to dig and construct that subterranean holding box, and to find a victim to dismember while Julie listened from the other side of the door, and the gas was certainly hard to come by but it was all worth it. For now, she was truly his. Okay, so some may say that this scenario is entirely implausible, but what were the circumstances of how you met your significant other? Are you sure? Well, while you ponder the meaning of the existence that's been created for you, don't forget to stop in again next weekend. And until then, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so I can catch you all again next Saturday. <laughs>